Great. You know, um, the other thing is, cats um, and folks, uh, he's also one of one of the best dressers on the planet. And uh, yeah. well, thank you. You know, sometimes people look at me now and say, "What do you mean you're one of the best?" I said, "I didn't say that." <laughs> you know, but uh, during that period, uh, which would have been uh, the '50s. You know, uh, I think Miles Davis and myself, we were mentioned in Esquire magazine. And at that time, we were the youngest. We were in our 30s then. And they had people like Fred Astaire, you know, a lot of the, uh, the people from Hollywood, the actors. They had all of them, and they had two jazz players. We were the youngest and the only ones into playing music, you know, That's like great. we do. Yeah. Every time, though, I see my my brother. If but guys, I don't dress. I only dress when I feel like. I mean, really, dress, yeah, dress. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like tonight. Tonight, I don't know. What, what's happening tonight? <laughs> got a little, I, I, got a little sonic tonight. celebration. I think you'll. I'm sure you'll step up to the plate and have some. I'm playing tonight, huh? Yeah, you are. You're gonna rock it. Uh, but you know, when I play now, I like to not dress up, but dress loose, so I can get into the instrument. You know, get to the drums and really feel. Good, loose, you know. Yeah. Do you really know or what? Or am I just saying? Yeah, he knows. They, you know? Yes, definitely. Explain that. If you really know, explain it. <laughs> that's, that's cool. No, no, I've watched him play so many times, and, I, and, and it's uh, when I first saw him, I saw him in, live the first time, January of, in Boston, and I sat really close to the drums. I had never seen anyone dance on the drums like that and, and offer so much color of sound and so much excitement. It was the band with Craig Handy, Dave Kukowski, Ed Howard. Now Scholars. When, when would that would have been? I moved to New York in, uh, two, uh, in 1992, so it was maybe 1990 or 1989. Where was that in Boston? Scholars. Scholars. Ah. It was her first gig of the year because you, it, this is really hip, check this out. He, he bought, he, he said, wait, this is our first gig of the year. We have to have champagne to celebrate. And they brought a bottle of champagne and you poured champagne for each guy in the band and you toasted to the first gig of the year as, wow, the, as a band. Wow, I thought that wow, was wow. very, very hip. That's a great memory, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a wow. powerful moment for me to sit that close. And I had him sign one of my favorite records of all times. His record on Impulse Records called Out of the Afternoon. Out of yeah. The afternoon. Well, that's one of the first records that I really got royalties for. So I'm glad you brought that up. In yeah. fact, uh, I have a, a new CD coming out, and the title of the whole thing is called Ro Royalty. <laughs> that's right. And it's spelled R O Y dash, and then the rest of the word. <laughs> Buy it. The other, the other uh, for all people that want to kind of get a great um, retrospective, there was a great. Uh, uh, three three CD and a DVD set put out by Dreyfus a couple years ago that could, that's a, like kind of spans your career of, of playing with Lester Young, your own bands, Lonious Monk, uh, John Coltrane, all this stuff that was available on that one record. It's so great, and there's some great footage of him uh, a playing, and it's uh, amazing stuff to check out. Hmm. I was I was watching something today actually because um, Steve Swallow talked about it that Steve Swallow. When, when you joined Gary Burton's band, they were so happy. It was like such an honor to have you be part of their band. And, and, they were, and he told me that every night it was just a joy to have you there. So I watched an, an, an old clip of the band with Gary Burton, Steve Swallow, and um, Jerry Hahn playing guitar. Are you going to show that clip to us this evening? Uh, we'd have to watch it on the iPhone, unfortunately. But uh, Come on, for real? <laughs> no, it's, it's really good. It's really happening somewhere in Europe, and it was, you're just... That would have been in the 60s, yeah. right? I'd like to check that out myself. Man. And then there's the there's a great clip of you with Stan Getz in uh, in uh, on the BBC with uh, with Gary Burton and Steve Swallow. Oh it's yeah, really nice. I, I hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But uh, David Letterman, did you just see him on David Letterman? Yeah. That was. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I was hoping you'd wear the jacket. You were hoping I would wear the jacket. It would take a lady to mention that that jacket. <laughs> Wow. I mean, uh, my brother called me and said, wow, he was so happy. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, wow, and everything, just, every, the whole thing looked great. You know, what, you know what we should do? Everybody should write into uh, David Letterman to have Roy Haynes 
on the show again. Yes, that would I'm be serious. great. Yeah. And so I'll do that. And that, that would, you know, that'd be, yeah. it'd lighten my world. You know? Yeah, it'd be great. The world and we needs... get the jazz back on the TV and the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. that's what let's we Let's make do. some noise. Like say, let's make some noise up in yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Hangs on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Back on the Letterman show. That's right. It was, you even made the top 10 list. Did you know that that night? Well, I, I heard people yeah. talk about because I heard him reading it. He yeah. was reading his top 10 list and I was... Yeah. He was part of the top 10 list. It was. Uh, I think he was really respecting me because they said I was in my 80s. Yeah. And I don't think you can really believe this yeah. guy's in his 80s. But I loved how he greeted you afterwards. You know, he was very cordial. He called you Mr. Haynes and I thought oh, that was... I noticed that too. Yeah. It was really... Yeah, it was cool. You know, so we should write in and get me yeah. back on the show, yeah. Like, we'll get, pass out those cards, you know, send them out. <laughs> Email David Letterman and say, we want to see Roy Haynes again. That would be, or any television show, that'd be, that's cool. what we need. Cool. That's what we need. Before, before, we, before we have a couple people ask some questions, I'd like to ask you about one, I mean, we, we can talk about all the other famous records, Live at the Five Spot, Now He Sings, Now He Sobs, um, Smokestack with Andrew Hill. Um, I mean, we could go on and on, 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 the records with John Coltrane. Um, his own, again, Out of the Afternoon, We Three, that's a great record. Find his newborn, Paul Chambers. His very first record, Busman's Holiday, which I have a copy of, of the small LP. That's a great record. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I mean uh, Sound of Sunny, Reaching Forth. Wow. Yeah, I mean, we could go, it's, it's something else. But there's one I, I asked you about one time in Chicago. And I, I, you guys may not know this, but he plays on Ray Charles' recording on Genius Plus Soul equals jazz of One Mint Julep. One Mint Julep, right. That's his beat. So when you hear that, I can play it. I think we can plug, plug it in perhaps in a second and check it out. But he told me to listen to, uh, yeah, it's so great. <laughs> Talk about funky. Should we check it out? Let's put it on. I bet it's almost going to be the same tempo. Almost. <laughs> Some more slick stuff. I know. Is gonna happen, right? <laughs> a little sequence and shit. Yeah, yeah, I know, man. You had it all over it. There's, um, I think, another uh, next year would be the uh, 50th anniversary of a release of a record that he's on. That is another m amazing recording. Uh, Oliver Nelson's Blues and the Abstract Truth. How many years? That 50 was years. Bob Zero. Come on, we did that 50 years ago. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> wow, if you, I mean, just just to hear the the brush beat on uh, on stolen moments alone, just so swinging on that, it's so beautiful. All right, with the sounds again, contributing. I read something recently that that you that you thought about that you think a lot about the the color of the sound. You think about the seasons as you're playing, you really bring, you try to open up all the senses, like that's what you were talking about earlier with the jacket being open, the clothes being comfortable to welcome all those sounds. Do you think that's something that for uh, someone like myself to fairly assess? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the seasons, yeah, the seasons. Colors and sound. Oh, and, yeah, of course. You, you know that. Yeah. But I, I remember one night seeing him at Birdland and we were all kind of lined up at the bar watching you. And I said to my friend, Roy Haynes has been messing us up for so... And look how long that these drummers have been sitting there going, oh, man. <laughs> you played, uh, when you were playing some of the... Uh, when you were playing uh, uh, Trinkle Tinkle that night, uh, you played some stuff on the drums I never heard. And, and I had a lot of people also saying the sound of surprise is so evident with you. You're always surprising. And I think you surprise yourself. I mean, I think you always welcome new sounds. Well, yes. I'm usually enjoying you know, what I'm hearing with uh, the other people on the bandstand at that time and it, it inspires me to come out, it makes me think of 
certain things or something, you know. I try not to say too much. Yeah. You know, I guess it's very easy to do, you know, overplay or, and sometimes I guess we all do that, but you know, it's really great to have been playing since the 40s to, uh, you know, I didn't know that this was going to happen this afternoon. You would be putting me on this test. No, come on, man. Or, you know, look at the people, I mean, they're lined up on that side. Look, I can just feel the vibe as some of A lot of, the of love people. up here, baby. A lot of love for you. Roy Hayes. And now, it's really... It really inspires me, like, every time I see you, which I don't see you that often, periodically, you know, to meet somebody and get that feeling that you give out. Thank you. you know, I'm serious. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Thank you. And also, you know, to come in and feel the inspiration that I'm feeling from everybody. It's Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I'm serious. You know, when he's at the grocery store sometimes, I'll... Oh, shut up. No, I'll say... He likes to... I bump into him periodically at this uh, particular market. Market. Long and I'll say to the... Uh, I'll say to the, the person behind the checkout counter, I'll just say, you know, the world's greatest drummer just left right there. And, and one day this young man said, hey, thanks for telling me because we know he's something. You know, we can tell he's something when he walks in. Somebody really said that? Yep. Yeah, they did. They can tell. They're like... They can feel the aura, you know? They want to see you on Letterman more too. We'll get those people to write. You know? well, I think they were working doing it. Maybe not. No, they were songs. there. I think yeah, we probably a lot of a lot of people got to see that. I think that was really a treat. Can, this, we, can we take a few questions from people? Will you take yeah, a few in questions? a minute? But okay, now well, that you brought up this Letterman thing, you know, you're making me stop and think. You know, <laughs> you know this. Wow, I'm beginning to really. I'm believing it. Roy Haynes show. Ask me what? The hell that? <laughs> get your own show. At the end of the show, he came over and stood on my. Uh, left hand side and I didn't know it was the end of the show because I thought it was going to go on forever and I was wondering what was up. He came over just stood beside me but that was the end of the show, you know, that night. Yeah. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I think that's great. Keep telling, that's a good story. No, 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 no. Did he, uh, did he say, what did he say? He's like, man, great? Well, the, the show was going off then yeah. so he, yeah. he was just being cool. You know? uh, an interview, <laughs> I think somebody brought up this week a, 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 a two minute interview would have been priceless, I think on national priceless? television like that. Yes. Yeah, some people did ask to say, well, did you talk? Did he talk to you? <laughs> yeah, but it been, would have been very, very nice. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to also say before we take a few questions that um, he's been very generous to uh, sign a symbol uh, uh, that the, the Zildjian company has kindly donated and we're going to auction it off tonight prior to his set. Really? Yes. Really? Yeah, we talked about it's gonna it. It's going to be auctioned the, off. Yeah, huh? we're going to donate it to the um, scholarship fund here. We have a four-week great jazz camp. Great, a lot of great young artists. You see a lot of them around here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow! So he's been great for that, and uh, and he's introduced some great, you know, Don Brayton played played in your on your band. Yes, he did. Really? Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people. A lot of you've had a lot of great people in your bands over the years. He had a uh, even has he had the he has the Fountain of Youth band. Yeah, appropriately named Hip Ensemble because I think you pretty much personify uh, hip. You know, well, so. the, they don't, that name was in the 70s, yeah. I think, when I had a group, a hip ensemble. So, yeah. You know. Great band. That was a lot of great additions of that band.